guys, Mr. Bowman here. We are looking at 2.6 algebraic concepts. Um, in these series of videos, we're going to be focusing on the achieved questions only from the 2015, 16, 17, and 18 exams. So let's get into our first question. Question number one, find the value of log 2, 1024. First thing we need to remember is this one's going to come up quite a bit in our achieve section. But the log has a base of the answer, which is equal to the power. And we can switch that back and forth with the index form. So that's the log form, index form is always the base number to a given power always gets us to an answer. So we can switch back and forth. This time around, we're trying to find the value of this. So we've got log 2, 2 of 1024. And we're trying to find what that is equal to. We don't know what that's equal to. Algebra, just a reminder, when we don't know what it's equal to, is we're going to put an x there instead. And that always happens when you're trying to evaluate or find the value of a certain log function. Now, we're now going to do that. So here's our base power. That there would be the answer, and that there is the, the power or what it would have been. So that becomes 2 to the power of x is equal to 1024. If you know your power of twos, well, you already know the answer. If you don't, an unknown power always tells us you need a log both sides to find the answer. So log 2 to the power of x is equal to log 1024. Power can move to the front. So we've got x log 2 is equal to log 1024. x is going to be equal to 1 thousand so the log of that divided by the log of two so just a reminder that there is times log two i can move it to the other side as divide by log two and when you put that into your calculator you're going to get an answer of 10. okay we're now on to question number two and you can see it's a similar type of log question um, and we have an unknown in there so we're going to be using the same switching type formula from log form to index form like we did in question number one. Um, so firstly, let's write down our equation. So log with a base of four, three w plus one, when is that equal to two? So just a reminder that four is the base number. That thing in brackets, three w plus one, sometimes it's just the number there. That is what I call the answer in the index form. And that two is the power. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that 4 squared is equal to 3w plus 1. Now this equation here, just a simple linear equation, you might have done it in year 8, 9, or 10, but that 4 squared is going to become 16 is equal to 3w plus 1. We're going to go minus 1, minus 1. 15 is equal to 3w. We're then going to go divide by 3, divide by 3. And finally, that means w will be equal to 5. Okay, we're now up to question number three, and this one here is looking at our indice rules. So we've got if a is equal to y to the power of three quarters, find an expression for a to the power of seven in terms of y. So what that's trying to say is you need to get rid of the a, and you need to put in the y. So let's say we've got a to the power of seven. We're going to take away the a and put in that y value we've been given. So that's y three quarters to the power of 7. Over here, we've now got an expression of y, which is what it's asked us for in terms of y, and all we really need to do is expand the brackets. So when you've got a power and brackets, it is a multiplication type rule, so that's going to be y 3 quarters times 7, and when you do that, that's going to be y 21 over 4. So that there would be enough to get your final answer. You may want to change that to third, four, so that third form, so the fourth root of y to the power of 21 would also be an equivalent answer, but that fraction form would be all good. Final question from this part, question number four. Um, Talia uses timber to form the exterior sides of a rectangular garden. So straight away, we know we've got a garden and it is a rectangle. Drawing a rectangle would be a big help for this type of question. The length of the garden is x and its area is 50 meters. So this one is a bit tricky. So we know the length is x. So that means that top there is going to be x. 
and we know it has an area of 50. So the area is equal to base times height. So 50 is going to be equal to x times the height. And we've got no idea what the height is. So at this stage, a lot of us do get a bit confused and a bit worried, like, oh, I don't know what the height is. But just a reminder, in algebra, if you don't know what it is, you can give it a letter. So we're going to call the height y. And there is going to be x times y, and that will give us the height of this shape. So that's the area-related stuff. We now need to think about our perimeter. So our perimeter is going to be equal to 2x plus 2y. So it'll be the y's plus that and that as well. That'll give you the perimeter of that shape. And we're trying to prove that the perimeter is 2x plus 100 divided by x. So you can kind of see this 2x part and that 2x part. We've got that in common. How does 2y become 100 divided by x? And that comes from the area part. So what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange that equation. So we've got 50 is equal to x, y. We're going to go divide by x, divide by x. And that's to make the y the subject. So that means y is going to be equal to 50 divided by x. If y is the subject, we can put it into the other equation, the perimeter equation, substitute, and that will only leave x. Let's do that here. So we've got 2x plus 2 times 50 divided by x. 2 times 50 is 100, so it's going to be 2x plus 100 divided by x. And that there matches the thing we were trying to achieve. And when the question says show, it means you're not calculating. It means you're trying to demonstrate that the answer you've been given is correct. So guys, this was the end of our first Achieved Questions video, 2015 exam. We're going to also be looking at the 16, 17, and 18 exams. Um, keep an eye out for those as well.